Good afternoon and hello, folks. Thank you for joining us for another Flycast Partners presentation. My name, of course, is Rich Longo, and I want to thank you for joining us to learn a little bit about Proofpoint and an introduction to people-centric security presented by Proofpoint's very own Brian Reed. Now, Brian Reed has over 20 plus years in IT security experience. He's worked on a variety of product development, product management, systems engineering, business development, and sales roles in this space. Uh, prior to Proofpoint, he uh, came to Proofpoint from Gardner uh, and has been involved in multiple organizations involved in IT security. Before we get started, uh, I don't want to take too much time away from uh, Brian's presentation. Let me introduce Flycast Partners. Flycast Partners offers best-in-class implementation services and training in IT service management, IT asset management, IT operations management, enterprise service management, and workload automation spaces using ITO best practices. Our professional services team has well over 5,600 professional service engagements on site and remote. And as an organization, Flycast Partners has well over 1,200 regular customers throughout all of Canada and the United States. We encourage you to reach out to us at 844-FLYCAST, that's 844-359-2278, or visit our website at www.flycastpartners.com. Chat with us live Monday through Friday during normal business hours. They're happy to help you out with any questions you might have or special requests, training, remote administration services, or you can email us at Flycast Partners, info at flycastpartners.com. By all means, during today's presentation, folks, I encourage you to ask those questions. Brian is happy to answer any questions that you might have. Uh, so go ahead and type those in the questions section of this presentation, and we'll answer them as we go along and what time will allow within the 45 minutes that we have. Without further delay, I'm going to turn this over to Brian. Great, thanks Rich, and thank you so much for inviting Proofpoint uh, to join this presentation and the opportunity here. So again, uh, as Rich mentioned, Brian Reed, uh, Proofpoint. I'm a relatively new member of the team. I actually joined Proofpoint back uh, in October of last year and came from Gartner, as he mentioned. And I covered a lot of different markets at Gartner and all of them covered people-centric security. So coming over to uh, Proofpoint from Gartner made a lot of sense with my background. I wrote the last two magic quadrants and was the lead author around enterprise data loss prevention. I covered security incident response, security awareness, uh, as well as insider threat management. So all of those areas are things that Proofpoint certainly does. But all of those different technology areas are really supported by this notion of people-centric security. And what do I mean when I say people-centric security and taking a people-centric approach? Well, that means looking out at the threat landscape and understanding and contextualizing what these, these threats and vulnerabilities actually mean to my own specific organization. Uh, so many of, of you are familiar with getting threat intelligence feeds and consuming threat intelligence through products or services or feeds or things like that. But what's really important is making that threat intelligence actionable. So starting out, one, one important thing to point out about threats out there in the security landscape is as we look at the threat landscape, nearly 100% of those threats are human activated in some way. And what that means is the threat landscape is ultimately characterized by humans and human intervention and human action. Uh, so for the third straight year, Proofpoint's own internal threat research team confirmed that over 99% of all attacks have some sort of element of human intervention. Uh, and what that means is they're not just automated out there. Uh, common exploits, things like office uh, VBA macros and threat hijacking, all rely on somebody to take some sort of action or click on something. Uh, if we build this out to the next part of this, last year, even Microsoft looked at, at the fact of 67% um, decrease in malware infections in 2019. Well, what's that telling us? It's telling us that we're doing a pretty good job at the endpoint of putting things like endpoint protection in place and looking at endpoint detection response, which is wonderful. But the reality is endpoint detection response and endpoint protection doesn't always help you in the case of clicking on something like a malicious URL uh, or a payload in email or something delivered through a web application like Box or Dropbox or OneDrive. So there are other ways around the problem. Uh, another big problem we're gonna talk about in a minute is around credential phishing and business email compromise. Uh, if we advance this, 
uh, the attacks are getting a lot more creative. So I mentioned those malicious URLs uh, and those those more sophisticated attacks. So the, an ongoing trend is the abuse of those legitimate file shares. Many of you might be using OneDrive for business and SharePoint Online or Box or Dropbox Enterprise uh, or even G Suite. And, and the reality is that attackers are using the same tools that you use in your environment. So when it comes to innovating on threats, attackers often mix a lot of uh, tools, techniques, or tools, tactics, and procedures that look that take a multi-stage approach. It's not just, I want you to go run malware. I'm going to try to get somebody to run malware. There's a lot of different steps that go into this. And a lot of these things might just look like, to the casual security administrator, very usual and customary kinds of things going on in your environment. Uh, so if we advance to uh, the next one, a great example of this is a common malware uh, variant known as Ryuk. This has been uh, a, a malware family that's affected particularly a lot of state and local governments out there. Uh, a couple of years ago, many municipalities in Texas, uh, including several law enforcement agencies at the city and county level, dealt with Ryuk infections. Uh, I live in the metro Atlanta area. We had a couple of large county governments that were hit with uh, variants of, of the Ryuk ransomware family. And it's one of those uh, tricky things that, that can come in a multi-stage or multi-pronged way. Uh, so if we advance this, I mentioned business email compromise and email account compromise. And, and those might sound like the same things, but they're a little bit different. So if we step back and define what is BEC, you've probably seen a lot of this in the news. Business email compromise really boils down uh, and can be described as identity deception. This is when attackers pretend to be you uh, to trick somebody else into taking some sort of action. Uh, they might pretend to be you to uh, get you to wire money or uh, allow some sort of access or approve uh, some other credentials or, or something else being done inside of your environment. Email account compromise, if we build this out, is really this notion where there's a technical compromise where somebody actually becomes you. This could be uh, where somebody actually takes over your account. Uh, in the A lot of people will call this account takeover. But this is when attackers actually become you because of that successful account takeover. Credential phishing is just one of those ways that accounts get compromised. But attackers aren't always looking to just steal credentials. The real goal is to establish some sort of persistence in your environment and then move laterally in the organization and either discover more about your environment uh, or do other things. So one of the things when I used to talk about this at Gartner was I would actually uh, bring up some of the FBI data here. And there's some really good stuff that um, the Department of Justice and the FBI have put out specifically around business email compromise. There was actually a report that they put out in 2018 where they talked and profiled nine different companies that had suffered over a billion dollar losses in combined losses. And two of those organizations had each had a hundred million dollars plus in losses that were directly attributable to either business email compromise or email account compromise. Uh, and a lot of times, particularly for mid-sized organizations, this can be a, a organization uh, ending or an organization apocalypse type of environment uh, or type of situation that people can fall under. Uh, if we advance to the next slide, I mentioned since we're moving so much of our environments to the cloud, uh, everybody throws out that phrase digital transformation or moving to the cloud. Many of you are on Office 365 or G Suite. And those account compromises are, are actually growing astronomically. 85% uh, of all organizations have experienced at least one form of targeted password attack. And these are typically uh, intelligent brute force attacks. Uh, almost half of organizations have had a breach uh, to either their Office 365 or G Suite uh, accounts uh, that they've identified as being compromised. And 6% of organizations have had a compromised VIP account. So what this means is uh, the case of CEO fraud, where somebody even takes it over uh, the leader of your organization's account uh, and masquerades around with them. So the case of email account compromise or account takeover has taken place. Uh, and once those attackers get into an environment, there's a lot of ways they can cause damage. Uh, they can launch malware attacks. They can install different third-party apps with a persistent uh, identity token to make it look like it's them. They can access calendars and better contextually understand what your people are doing. So if I know that my CEO is not going to be back in the office in the next two days, 
I know that I might have free reign on being able to send out directives to other people and pretend to be him. So if we move to the next slide, uh, defenders, it, all of that stuff is, is great from you know, threat intelligence standpoint and a background on, on the threat environment. And the problem is us as defenders don't focus on people. The attackers focus on people. The way that we've traditionally uh, stacked our security spending has really been around this notion. Uh, and a lot of these numbers you can see on the left are actually from uh, Gartner. Uh, and these have since been updated from middle of last year. Uh, we probably need a new graphic here, but they still bear out pretty much the same, that about half of the spend is focused on protecting traditional uh, network on-premises infrastructure. Now, that number is shrinking and shrinking more and more every quarter. Uh, but if you combine network and endpoint, so the classic, uh, what I would joke about and call the firewall and AV approach, is three-fourths of the spend that we're making. Uh, notice that networks and endpoints don't really focus on people. People communicate, people share information. And that's really this email and web component. Uh, certainly with the, the growth of cloud applications, uh, that's a big thing. And attackers are consistently using email is that number one threat vector to launch attacks because it works, because all of us have email accounts and we're all collaborating and sharing information. Uh, even Verizon's own data breach investigation report last year reported that 94% of all breaches started with attacks targeting email. So if you're spending three-fourths of your security budget on networks and endpoints, and you're covering 6% of the attack surface doing that, I, I think you probably need to take a really hard look with a really strong focus on risk management. Are you spending dollars in, in the way that's going to get you the most value for protection? Uh, of course, your cybersecurity strategy really needs to consider more than email and threats. But if we start talking about insider threats uh, and, and other things, not just external attackers, uh, it's where it gets interesting. But looking to the future and, and this sort of classic firewall and AV approach that we've taken and looking at the defender's point of view, we need to make some fundamental shifts in how we approach our cybersecurity strategy. So most of the defenders and people in IT are, are still focusing on what you see on the left side of the screen here, which is that classic uh, on-premises, we've got a castle, we're gonna build a moat around it, we're gonna build really tall walls, we're gonna have smart people controlling the, draw, the drawbridges. But again, it's, it's all very focused on you know, putting a firewall in front of things, protecting specific assets, micro-segmentation and VLANs and, and all of these other access controls. The adoption of cloud platforms, moving your infrastructure outside of those four walls, fundamentally changes how you need to look at protecting your environment. Uh, not the least of which, uh, it you need to be able to provide some visibility into that. So as, as we all know, when you go to... Uh, Office 365 online, when you go to OneDrive, when you go to G Suite, that's encrypted. That, that's, a, that's an SSL connection, that's an HTTPS session. Uh, so it's encrypted in the browser. The only ways to break that are either have some sort of device sitting there, man in the middle, or have a presence on the endpoint. Or the other way is to have something like a cloud access security broker in place that's brokering that connection. Uh, and that's, that's where you see terms like cloud access security broker coming along. Uh, none of this even gets into things like social engineering. So if I'm an attacker and I'm going to attack you know, bank co out there, I'm going to go out to LinkedIn. I'm going to go out to Google. I'm going to socially engineer and socially understand who's in your environment. Who are the people I should be going after? Who are people that can provide either privileged access or I can take over their account or I can masquerade around as them and do some real damage? So the next slide, uh, at Proofpoint, one of the things that we talk about a lot is this notion of VAPs. Uh, and this typically stands for very attacked people, but it can also be described as or vulnerability, attack, and privilege. And if we divide up those three areas, one of the things that we do at Proofpoint with a people-centric focus is answer some of these basic questions around vulnerability, attack, and privilege. Who's likely to fall for these threats? So who are the people that are most susceptible to security issues in your organization? And there's a lot of ways with a people-centric point of view to figure that out. Who are people clicking on email links might be a really good way. Who are people that are consistently failing security awareness training or not taking security awareness training? Uh, who are people from a cloud app standpoint 
that continue to use their personal OneDrive account when maybe your organization is standardized on G Suite and Google Drive. Uh, so looking at people who are using unsanctioned IT, failing security awareness training, uh, clicking on things that they shouldn't, it's a great way to identify who those very attacked people might be. Uh, from an attack thing, who gets targeted? These could be high profile employees. These could be, uh, we're not doing it so much these days, but these could be people that travel uh, and connect to different environments frequently or connect from different environments very frequently. And then the other one is this notion of privilege. So who represents risk to the organization? Uh, it's interesting, particularly in mid-sized organizations. I've seen this a lot throughout my career where the IT administrators and IT security admins are oftentimes the worst where they're using their admin accounts to do everything when they should be using accounts with least privilege. So I see it all the time. It, it falls into that classic uh, practice what you preach uh, sort of thing. But being sure that you're really using uh, privileged access in a least privileged way is, is a huge way that you can help yourself. And it's a huge way to take a people centric approach. Uh, next slide, please. So Proofpoint takes this proprietary approach to people centric security by understanding what your human attack surface looks like. And one, one of the things we do when we, we have that is we call this our Proofpoint attack index. And the attack index we have quantifies a person's risk based on a couple of different things. Uh, the first one is we look at the actor type. So what is that person uh, at their core? Are, are they coming in from the outside? Are they a well-known state actor? Are they an unknown uh, actor? We look at the targeting type. So is it highly targeted? Is this a broad-based campaign? Uh, you probably saw the news around uh, Emotet, which um, is a large uh, malware syndicate that was shut down in the Ukraine uh, in the last 24, 48 hours. Uh, and it's made a lot of news. One of the things that they're actually doing as part of that shutdown, uh, and I actually retweeted this uh, a couple of hours ago, is that they're actually sending out decryption keys to everybody who's been impacted by Emotet uh, in the middle of, I think March 15th is when they're sending them all out. They're broadcasting them out, but they shut down this huge cybercrime ring. So really that's the difference between a highly targeted versus a broad-based campaign. There's a lot of different threat types out there and looking at how risky the threat is, is it some sort of backdoor malware, is it credential phishing, is there a people-centric element? And then the attack volume, this, this really goes to is this a wide scale attack? Is this something that's very targeted toward your organization or your industry or, or maybe yourselves and a couple of your competitors uh, in your industry? So one of the things that we do is we put together a weighted composite risk score. We look at the trends over time and then we compare that across different organizations. So if you think about what Proofpoint does, we're traditionally known for email security and one of the things of seeing all of that email flow, we're not just looking at who's sending it and who's receiving it. We're looking at attachments. We're looking at URLs. We're looking at payloads. We're, we're gathering all of that information, and we're able to build a lot of intelligence that we can then put into products. Uh, so next slide, please. Yeah, and that view of uh, our products. So this is a screenshot of what we call uh, our Proofpoint TAP dashboard, and TAP stands for Targeted Attack Protection. Uh, this is real-world data from an industrial design company. Uh, don't worry, we've anonymized this uh, so that the names and titles aren't really actual real people. But this gives you a really good perspective for following the user instead of just looking at data or just getting threat intelligence by itself of other companies. To, to be really fair, you might not necessarily care about threat intelligence from a bunch of anonymized people. You want to know what the threat is to you. And this is a great way of being able to triangulate that. So if we build this out, every user in here has an attack index. And that's a basis for comparison. So that attack index goes up and down over time. One of the things we do with our algorithm in the TAP dashboard is we analyze the organization to use the attack index to define what the threshold is for a very attack person. And one of the things that we can do is we can say, maybe if your organization, let's say, heaven forbid, you got hit with a ransomware uh, outage uh, a year or two ago, you could set a baseline attack index at a certain level, or you could have it trail off over time. Uh, but you can, you can really use the attack index to help identify who your riskiest people are in your organization. Uh, so in this scenario, the most attacked person is Ella Brown. She's a junior software engineer. We know a little bit about her. We see that... Um, 
credential phishing and uh, remote access Trojans are a big thing for her, but there's also some other, other things in there as well. Having this visibility means you can focus your security efforts. So you're not just trying to apply the same security policy for everybody. You know, maybe you can go through and look at who in this list is senior management. I see a couple of people in here, uh, Alexander Garcia, Alexander Anderson, that are directors in marketing. Maybe we need to do some very targeted training for product management and product marketing people. Uh, maybe we need a different type of training for software development and QA folks. Uh, and then maybe salespeople, which are some of the people on this list, uh, country managers, major account managers, maybe they get a, a different type of uh, education. Maybe they get a different type of protection profile uh, in the product. So it's really about tailoring security based on the context of what you look like as an organization. Uh, next slide. The other thing that the TAP dashboard can do is it can provide a view into compromised accounts. So if we look at the first account on the list, uh, Kenneth Amenis uh, is the top user at risk. So with this unified view of email and cloud threats, we can observe possible signs of whether Kenneth's account has been compromised. For example, if Kenneth's received, uh, has likely received or actually received uh, phishing uh, attacks or has done a number of different suspicious logins, we'd be able to uh, highlight that there as well. So this view can help us with a lot of risky third-party applications. This can help with uh, these top users at risks. You can highlight contractors, suppliers, uh, those kinds of people that might have access into your environment. And again, help answer that question of who are my riskiest users uh, and what are they doing? So next slide. Yeah, so if we really talk about what's at the core of, of Proofpoint as a company and what we do, everything we do is based upon security intelligence. And it really helps to feed this idea of a people-centric platform. And with that people-centric platform, we have a couple of core missions. The first thing we want to do is we want to protect the number one threat vector. And as we've shown, uh, the number one threat vector, 94% of threats, uh, if you look at the Verizon data breach investigation report from 2019, 94% of threats ultimately are born out of the email vector. Uh, and again, if you think about it, the spend on that level of, of email and web security combined is about 22% of security spend out there. So we're clearly spending money in the wrong ways. Uh, but if we look at that number one threat vector, Proofpoint's got a number of answers here. We certainly can help with the threat detection and response, like I showed you with the TAP dashboard. We can look for email fraud defense. Information protection is another interesting one because we've talked about threats to this point. I know one of the things that, that Rich and I will get on a future call and really dig into is protecting the data and protecting information. Uh, and that's been a huge focus of what we've been working on here at Proofpoint along with archiving and compliance. So looking at some of the newer ways that people collaborate, and this really gets over to the third part of the slide over here, protecting what people access. If you think about your own organizations uh, and just your normal course of doing business, sure, you're sending a lot of emails, but you're using a lot of new applications that maybe you weren't using three years ago or five years ago. Uh, applications like Slack and Teams, we're on GoToMeeting, GoToWebinar right now using things like Zoom, using things uh, like Cisco WebEx. And, and people do all kinds of things with those platforms. They transfer files. They share information. Uh, all of that stuff needs to be inspected. So information protection and archiving and compliance are huge parts of the Proofpoint family of products and portfolios. And certainly protecting those goes hand in hand with that number one threat vector of email. A lot of those uh, threats to information and those those compliance uh, violations are still born out of the, the email uh, channel as, as a root cause. Uh, in the middle here, protecting people. Uh, this is a big one. Once we can actually see who our users are at risk, we can start applying appropriate protections. And again, this doesn't mean that the same security policy goes out to everybody in the organization. This really means tailoring protection based upon groups, activities, uh, what people's history is. Do you have somebody who is in the marketing department that clicks on everything they see, or do you have somebody in the marketing department who is very judicious about how they share information? Well, you wouldn't want to give them the same policy just because they're both in the marketing department. They both handle information in a different way. They both handle threats in a different way. 
So we probably want to make sure that we're we're tailoring our protection to make the most sense to them. Uh, one of the things that we've classically talked about with uh, security has been for years, it's always been a trade-off between business enablement and protecting users. And I don't think we need to, to have that trade-off. And that's one of the, th- the core tenets of what we talk about here at Proofpoint. Okay, so why do this now? Let's go ahead and build this out. So again, we talked about mitigating risks and protecting against the number one threat vector. This is really the best, fastest, and cheaper, cheapest way to lower risk of breach. And the idea here, it, just like going back to that slide, and I'll, I'll beat this like a drum, three-fourths of security spend is spent on things that solve 6% of the security risk out there. Uh, it seems like an incredibly unbalanced approach. So I'm, I'm not sure that uh, you know if, if your organizations are set up that way, I would probably take a, a good look at how you're budgeting and allocating for different problems with information security. Uh, number two is really around having that visibility for risk. And Proofpoint does a pretty good job with this, with the visibility that we have into not just email, but into cloud collaboration and looking at different messaging platforms, things like Slack and Teams and Office 365 and G Suite. Uh, so having that right visibility is important to be able to accurately and effectively report on risk. So telling us what our attack service looks like. And if you don't know who your very attacked people are, I would make a pretty good argument that you don't really understand what that attack surface is. So if you can't answer at a board level, if you're a CISO, if you're a director of security and you're in front of your management team, you're you're in front of your e-staff, the board level, and they ask you, okay, what are our 10 biggest threats? Who are our 10 riskiest users? Those are questions that you probably want to have in your hip pocket and be able to focus what that real risk means to the organization and then apply security controls where they matter the most. Uh, and then finally, uh, Proofpoint is number one for operational impact. So we we typically see security operations centers spend anywhere from 40 to 60% of their time on incidents originating in email. So what we want to do is be able to operationalize the, the things that we have. That's why the TAP dashboard's got some drill down views and being able to, to take a people-centric approach. This helps take that burden off your team and your users and other downstream controls that you're doing, like that endpoint detection and response at the endpoint. Uh, Next slide. So a little bit of an overview for those of you who aren't familiar with Proofpoint. Uh, Proofpoint really is one of the top 10 global cybersecurity companies out there. We're public company. Uh, PFPT is the sticker symbol, uh, the ticker symbol. Uh, Been around since 2004. that people-centric approach is really what we do. We protect many of the world's largest organizations, industry-leading organizations, but we also protect a lot of small and mid-sized organizations as well. Uh, it's not just a solution geared toward the Fortune 100, Fortune 1000, Global 2000s. We have a lot of small and mid-sized organizations as well. And that really, having that diverse group of clients really helps us from that threat intelligence standpoint. That's why I started with some of the threat intelligence things that we do to build that people-centric security platform, you know, just going out and looking at what the biggest companies are doing and their biggest threats are might not apply to a mid-sized organization. Uh, the same way that just looking at what small and mid-sized organizations do might not apply to large organizations. So we, we need to have that diversity of threat intelligence. It's critically important. Uh, this third column makes me laugh a little bit. Uh, Magic Quadrant Leadership, since I was formerly at Gartner, uh, the secure email gateway is no longer a Magic Quadrant that was retired a few years ago. Uh, the security awareness training is also no longer a Magic Quadrant. That's a market guide. Um, I was actually the analyst that retired that. Uh, but there are a lot of great uh, things that we do in those markets. Uh, and I, it's a deeper discussion. I don't want to go off on that tangent. But um, you know, it's great that we have leadership uh, with industry analysts, whether we're talking about Gartner or Forrester or IDC or others. Uh, but really, if, if you're looking at a magic quadrant and buying just stuff in the leader's quadrant, particularly uh, if you're not in a large enterprise organization, it might not be something that contextually makes a lot of sense. Uh, and furthermore, one of the big beliefs I have, and this is one of the, the big beliefs we have in the culture here at Proofpoint, is that there's no one vendor that can do everything in cybersecurity. So it's super important to have seamless integration with other uh, vendors out there who take a a more nuanced approach, a more updated approach uh, to the cybersecurity problem. 
people that are really looking at, at doing great things. I, I don't want anybody to get the impression that I was trying to bag on Endpoint per se, but somebody like CrowdStrike does a fantastic job of doing some really innovative things on the endpoint detection and response and endpoint protection side of things. Uh, we're not an EPP, we're not an EDR, but we work really well with those guys. Uh, same thing, we're not an identity and access management provider or a privileged access management tool, but vendors out there like Okta and SailPoint are folks that we integrate with uh, in CyberArk. Uh, we'll see that I think here on the next slide or two. Uh, that we integrate with, and we put a lot of pride in in making those integrations and putting those things together to help organizations get more out of their security investments. Uh, so next slide. Yeah, I mentioned uh, number one deployed solution in the Fortune 100, Fortune 1000s, Global 2000s. Uh, this slide needs to be updated because I think we're at about 8,200 uh, enterprise customers globally. I think we announced earnings uh, here in a few weeks, and, and that number will be updated. Uh, over 130,000 small and mid-sized organizations, uh, and we have 120 plus of the world's largest internet service providers that we've got visibility into. So what this really means is it's a ton of visibility. It's a ton of threat intelligence. It's a ton of information that we're feeding into the products to help make everybody's lives a little bit easier. So some statistics around what we do with threat research and threat intelligence is we view a little bit more than 3 billion emails per day on average. Uh, we look at something around the neighborhood of 13 to 15 million cloud accounts out there. Uh, we look at a number of different intrusion detection sensors. So uh, for those of you who are very familiar with the network intrusion detection or intrusion prevention space, uh, if you've used Snort or Suricata for years, uh, Proofpoint uh, owns and maintains emerging threats which a lot of small and mid-sized organizations use on their firewalls uh, in their intrusion detection and prevention systems for rule updates. So Proofpoint actually provides the intelligence for those, those IDS uh, and IPS rules. Uh, and we monitor uh, almost a half a billion different domains uh, on average. So a lot of interesting stuff that we do, and we use all this and populate this into what we call uh, our Proofpoint Nexus threat graph. So we're pulling in feeds from all of these different channels, whether we're talking about email or zero trust network access and, and feeding our products and making our products more intelligent based off of what's going on today. Uh, so next slide. And this is really the platform. For, so for those of you who are wondering and have asked, okay, so, so what can you guys do? I might've heard about Proofpoint doing email, but what are all the things and all the capabilities that you have? We really have five major uh, product families. So certainly in threat protection, uh, we're, we're very uh, email focused, very cloud uh, CASB focused in that sense. User protection, we have things like security awareness training, uh, threat simulation, uh, information protection. We have enterprise DLP and data classification and data discovery, uh, access protection. We have things like SaaS browser isolation. So if you do have that user who's going out and using their personal OneDrive when they should be using their corporate box instance, uh, we can pick up on things like that and prevent those data transfers uh, and redirect those users. Uh, and also other risk-based access controls. And then finally, we have a, a large part of our business where we do a lot of archiving and compliance uh, and supervision. Uh, and then, like I said, the, the products really map pretty well to that. And then the part across the bottom is really the partnerships that we have in the space, which are super critical because, again, no one security vendor is going to be able to, to go out there and do everything for you. Uh, we want to participate in a healthy ecosystem where we're working with other vendors to help, help tailor your security for what you need. All right. And I think... We're at about 35 minutes in, Rich. I think that was all we had. I think you had something else here on the next slide to close out. Oh, and we also have a bunch of different managed security services as well. And, and we have partners that offer managed security services and many of the services to help uh, you get the most success out of your Proofpoint investment. I think that's all I had. 
So here at, uh, at uh, Flycast Partners, we understand the challenging times that everyone has been going through, uh, especially during this time of pandemic and all the different things that have been occurring uh, throughout the year. I want each and every one of you to please take a moment and send us your questions and let's have Brian answer those uh, live for us today. Uh, this will definitely uh, be a great opportunity for you to get those questions answered now live. Uh, if by some chance that uh, you can't think of anything right now or have questions later, I encourage you to go ahead and uh, reach out to us by 844-FLYCAST. That's 844-359-2278. Uh, or you can email us at info at flycastpartners.com. Uh, by all means, happy to talk to you live on chat. Those guys are standing by for you Monday through Friday. Uh, they're more than happy to answer any questions, get you any information that you're looking for. Uh, with that being said, I'm not seeing any questions in our question section of this uh, this presentation right now. Uh, we do have a few more moments if you do have any last minute questions. But, Brian, I want to thank you for your time today and presenting for us. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Rich. And I think this is going to be the first of many. Uh, really, I, I like the idea of starting out with this top level approach to uh, taking a people-centric security approach to security, because from a philosophy standpoint, uh, I believe this is really unique in, in our approach at Proofpoint. It's not just about you know vendors selling a product. It's vendors selling something that can help you get visibility and get actionable information uh, that can make a positive impact on your business. Folks, stay tuned. We do have a couple more presentations coming up over the next few months. So uh, watch out on our website, look out on our social media, monitor your emails. We'll be inviting you to the next uh, stages of this continuing discussion that we're having. With that being said, I want to thank everyone for your time and attendance today. Brian and team, thank you for being there uh, to present for us and uh, have a great day, folks, until our next, uh, our next presentation or our next uh, webinar. Thank <laughs> you.